G'day everyone, Matt Elder Family Bricks here. What is Chessington World of Adventures Resort UK like now? It has reopened with COVID-19 measures in place. Is it worth going? What has changed? What is the experience like? Etc. We'll cover this in the video and give our thoughts and first-hand experience as a family after our visit on the 16th of August 2020. We'll do a whole time-lapse walkthrough of the park and key attractions in about 10 minutes. This video is brought to you by McCatsum Holiday Homes in Margate and Broadstairs. Great for a week's holiday or a weekend escape, being just over an hour east of London, UK. Treat yourself to amazing sunsets, a Lego wall or great food. Visit www.macatsim.com and mention this YouTube video and we'll look after you. Okay, so let's start off coming in from the car park because there's a lot of stupidity happening here. For the time you get from the car park, actually the turnstile is half an hour and there's so many stupid things happening here. Um, first of all is there's another car park which actually filled up after us but they got let in first which is why this line keeps stopping all the time because people who arrived after you are actually getting in before you into this queue and then you go into this holding area and you're going backwards and forwards and this is actually really slow because what happens is you got some temperature check people up further and they only have two of them for the whole line so you got two temperature check people but six security guards doing bag checks and things and then you come into this holding area um, so they really need to sort this out because it's just so frustrating. You're being held up because of poor management of the way that they're handling the entry into the park. And it's just so silly. You need to control the car parks in a way which is actually fair. And then the temperature check people, you need six of them. Like why you've only got two with that many people is just ridiculous. Anyhow. So you get in and you discover that no shows are running at all throughout the park, which is just seems really silly because you've got Merlin, which owns Chessington Worlds of Adventure, also own Legoland. And at Legoland, they're able to do shows, but they're not able to do shows here. And this is a really other interesting thing is it looks like they're two completely separate entities and there's no overriding sort of guidance coming from Merlin to say this is what we're doing. Each park is doing things completely different and contradictory. We're going to be straight up. We didn't actually get to do many rides today because the queue times were actually also ridiculous. So if you are coming along in summer, you really need to think about a fast pass. In terms of queue times, you're looking for most things at least an hour. The kids' playgrounds are also contradictions. So you got this one coming up here, which was closed for a bit while they did their half hour wipe down and everything like that. Uh, there's a couple of them which do that. And then there's others which are completely closed. So for the kids, you've now don't really have too many playgrounds. You've taken away all the shows and the feeding times and viewing times for the animals as well. As you see coming up here, you are still able to go into some of the areas where the animals are and still see them and things. So the kids do get enjoyment out of that. But in terms of having talks or anything like structured feeding times and that, that's not happening at all. Um, so some goats and that there. And ticket prices seem to be pretty much the same as last year. So you're paying full price, but having less access to the park. And in relative terms, it's also on par with Legoland in terms of ticket prices. I do keep making the comparison between Chessington World of Adventures and Legoland because we've been to both quite a bit and you can see a video around here on the Legoland sort of response and how they're dealing with it. And Legoland just seemed to be a lot more structured and organized and Chessington just seemed to be haphazard and all over the place. Merlin Entertainments also owns Legoland and Chessington World of Adventure. So you've got the same entity basically able to control and set the rules around what COVID is and the response to it. And they're just doing two completely different things. So it's really interesting just seeing that contrast there. Uh, here we're just in the queue waiting for the Sea Life entrance, um, which was about 10, 15 minutes. It wasn't very long, but then you get into here and it's actually, yeah, it's always quite well done. Um, again, there's some, the, the touchy thing Things you can't get involved with anymore as what you used to be able to it is nice that they limit the number of people in here so you don't have the usual sort of thing of people all over the top of you like you did in previous years um, but then there's a lot of interactivity which is just lost uh, kids not being able to touch things some of the things where they used to be able to go under and pop up in the bubbles are also not there as well Throughout the day, comparing it to last year in summer when we went, it felt like the park numbers were basically the same. So I think they are saying that the park numbers are more limited than what they were in previous years, but I'm certainly not noticing it. It just felt like it was much the same as the previous year. In a sec here, we're going to pop into the smokehouse for lunch. And again, it was a half hour queue just to get inside the door of the place. Then once you get inside and get a table, you then got to queue up to go to the till and pay. And there's one person on the till. It's just like, 
why would you not have a second person there? You, they just are not good at identifying where bottlenecks are and doing basic things and putting staff in key locations to relieve the bottlenecks. It's just so, so stupid and frustrating. Uh, anyhow, over here at Sea Lion Bay, there's some sea lions swimming around here, which, again, the kids really love seeing and able to also then go and see them underwater and just zipping past there. Now we'll head on over to where the lion enclosures are. Um, they weren't actually all that active, so I've got some footage from a previous year that we saw them, so you can get a bit more of a sense. Definitely want to bring you to the end of our lion talk this afternoon. My name is Adam, so if you do have any questions, please feel free to quit and have a little bit of a chat with me. I've been wandering down towards the big windows at the bottom of the lion enclosure. And I do also work with the tigers, the gorillas, and all of the other animals that you see down here on the trail. So if you have any questions about any of those things, please feel free to come over and have a little chat. So that was pretty cool to be able to get up close to them when they're active like that. And again, here's another one. So again, that was footage from a previous year. Now we'll head up to where the gorilla enclosure is. This is now all one way, and it's a bit of a queue to get in. It was about 15 minutes to get to this point here, and then again, socially distanced. Uh, they weren't all that active when we were there seeing them, so just uh, go and wander off, and there's the next stage where you could have seen them had they been a bit more active, so it was still good to see them. We also felt too that the park was being a little bit run down and just a bit grimy and you know again comparing it with Legoland which seems to you know be relatively well maintained and freshly painted and things like that like some of the roller coasters you look at the support structures and it's like have they even been painted in the last 10 years like it's little things like that and it just just doesn't look as fresh. We'll now head on over to the Zufari sort of area um, and the footage that we hear again is from a previous year because the queues and things were just silly so it's basically as you'll see you get on a little truck type thing and get to go and see the animals that they have in this sort of uh, area and it's quite good at least when we did it last year uh, it comes along and it's able to stop at certain locations like here and you know see different giraffes and things animals wandering around uh freely in open spaces which is cool so they're not all in restrictive cages and that you know some rhinos there as well much the same thing stopping for a little bit of a look and off we go again and coming up to this water feature thing here which is pretty cool and nicely done and then back and off we go so last time the ride was about six minutes from gate to gate going from one way all the way back around so overall is chessington world of adventure worth visiting as i'd like to starting to think of it as uh, chessington world of queuing it's really doesn't seem to have any value at the moment it's interesting comparing it to legoland you've got bottlenecks in places that they don't need to be and can be easily solved Legoland has shows, this doesn't have shows. Uh, the queue times are really quite long and extensive. So we actually left a little bit early in the end. Um, we were certainly looking at it and going, well, if you didn't have the Merlin passes and you were coming out here for a day out, given what you're paying and what you're able to get through and see and do, you'd be pretty disappointed. It also seems like it opens at 9.30, but the website tells you 10. It's definitely one of those parks you need to be there right when it opens so you can get on and do one or two of the big rides before the queues become a little bit silly. Chessington seems to be able to cater for teenagers a lot better than say something like Legoland through their rides and you know having the animals and that there whereas Legoland is more that 2 to 12 years old category and age range. I think I'd rather drive the extra 40 minutes and get to Legoland than be here at Chessington. I think the fact that you don't have the shows and the zookeeper talks and things like that with the animals, that really does take away from the experience. And it's one thing which was quite unique about it. Um, I think it'd be better off going to London Zoo to get that than here. 
So that's it from us here at Family Bricks at Chessington's World of Adventure Resort UK today. We won't be in a hurry to come back anytime soon. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button if you've gotten value out of this or gotten some entertainment or learned something. And if it has helped you to make a decision to come or not to come, we'd love to know about it. Or any comments you have, put them in the comments down below. Here is our recent video update on Legoland Windsor UK so you can get a comparison point. Alternatively at the moment, days out in London based castles like the Tower of London and Hampton Court Palace are highly recommended as they're almost deserted at the moment so you can get in and see all the sorts of things you really easily and the playgrounds are open for kids and well done here is a video from our sponsor macats and holiday homes until next time when we talk about all things lifestyle